Moment number four, China bans Bitcoin mining, sparking great migration of hash rate. In May 2021, China implemented a ban prohibiting financial institutions and payment companies from providing services related to Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, including registration, trading, clearing, and settlement. This directive, announced by the National Internet Association of China, the China Banking Association, and the Payment and Clearing Association of China, cited volatility and speculation as primary concerns. This statement highlighted that virtual currencies are not supported by real value, their prices are easily manipulated, and trading contracts are not protected by Chinese law. While the ban restricted financial institutions from offering crypto-related financial products or services, it did not make it illegal for individuals to hold cryptocurrencies. The crackdown was part of a broader trend, with similar restrictions occurring in Nigeria and Turkey earlier in 2021, each leading to varied consequences. Despite the extensive measures, CNBC reported six months later that Bitcoin mining continued in China. By May, regulatory pressures had significantly impacted the mining sector, with major ASIC manufacturer Bitmain halting sales and a noticeable drop in Bitcoin's total hash rate. By September, China had escalated to a full ban on Bitcoin, yet nearly 145 Bitcoin nodes remained operational in country. Reports contradicted each other regarding the presence of miners. A Chinese cybersecurity firm identified approximately 109,000 active mining IP addresses daily, while Cambridge University suggested no miners remained. The Bitcoin community met these developments with skepticism, noting China's history of banning Bitcoin without substantial long-term effects. However, the recent restrictions visibly impacted the local Bitcoin ecosystem, with many miners and exchanges reducing or ceasing operations. Although Bitcoin operates independently of government sanctions, China's stringent regulations evidently shape the local landscape of Bitcoin, at least temporarily. So what is money and how does it get value? Paper money has value because someone says so. Bitcoin is different. It's like digital gold. It has value for many of the reasons gold does, but that's only the start. It has a limited supply, only 21 million. So no one can decide to just print more because no central authority controls it. It can never be shut down. And unlike with banks and credit card companies, you don't need approval to use it. It puts the power back in all our hands. Bitcoin lets you control your finances. Kraken lets you buy Bitcoin. Kraken, see what crypto can be. Welcome back to the Bitcoin Magazine. Having a live stream, you just heard it, moment number four. China bans Bitcoin, another huge moment with geopolitical implications. I'm joined now by Mr. Ben Gagnon from BitFarms, someone who lived through the trauma of this moment and we hope can speak to its gravity. Ben, how are you doing? Happy having. I'm doing good. Happy having to you. Just a few blocks out. I know, four blocks to go. So Ben, take us into the mind of a miner during this moment. China, one of the largest geopolitical actors, bans Bitcoin, your mining firm, I'm assuming implicated. How did this affect the industry? Why was this such an impactful moment for the entire movement? Yeah, well, I mean, when the China mining ban happened, China represented the vast majority of the network. Uh, they were somewhere around, you know, in between 60 to 75 percent of the network. And China is also the number one electricity producer in the entire planet. Uh, and they have been the number one source of Bitcoin mining investments for many, many years. So when the China mining ban happened, effectively what that did was basically took 65 to 70 percent of the world's infrastructure for, for miners offline immediately overnight. And so what you saw was in every having epoch, you have one massive run up in Bitcoin mining economics, and then the very long uh, crash down to the bottom before the next having epoch and, and things kind of reset. Uh, with the China mining ban, we actually had a double wave. It was the only time we had a double pump mm. on Bitcoin mining economics because you, you removed so much of the, the physical infrastructure. Right. I think that's something that people don't understand is, you know, we still have never replaced that infrastructure. Huh. I mean, the hash rate is larger now than it was when the Bitcoin huh. mining ban took place, but those megawatts never came back. That physical infrastructure never came huh. back. You know, if China mining ban had never occurred, we'd probably be at 900 petahash, or, or huh. sorry, 900 exahash, or maybe even a zettahash huh. going into this halving, and instead we're at 650. Huh. So, you know, this is a massive boon to Bitcoin miners like, like BitFarms and everyone else, 
because we effectively have a much, much less competitive market space and much mm. more competitive economics mm. because of that China Bitcoin mining debt. Well, I know there's a lot touted that there has been a bit of a happy ending here in terms of hash rate distributing globally. I know you poured a little bit of cold water on that just there, talking about how some of this hash rate has not returned. But is there not a positive silver lining here? Did Bitcoin get more decentralized in your view? For sure, for sure. I mean, we had 70-ish percent all in one country. Now we have that spread around the globe a lot, a lot more evenly. So it is helping in terms of filling out Bitcoin's decentralization ethos. Uh, you know, the United States is the number one area, but we're seeing a lot of emerging economies starting to come up. The Paraguay is a big area for Bitcoin mining now. Um, Ethiopia is, is coming out as an emerging area for Bitcoin mining. And what we're seeing is Bitcoin mining is actually being used to bootstrap a lot of these economies and infrastructure projects all around the world, you know, in countries where no other industries are willing to make those investments in those areas. Um, but Bitcoin miners are seeking profit and they're willing to go to these areas for cheap power and opportunity. So yeah. it's absolutely been yeah. fantastic for decentralization. <laughs>
unless you're looking at this massive economic opportunity and you're saying, you know what, we're going to disconnect from the pool and we're going to solo mine for, mm. for just a few blocks. Mm. Um, I think with the amount of, of, of interest and economic activity that, that's coming out of this first block, that's certainly something that could happen. Um, you know, there's an asymmetric reward there to disconnect from the pool and, and solo mine and, and try and hit try and hit it big. It's, it's a lottery with a really good chance of playing out. In your view, does this raise awareness of potential solutions? Obviously, some innovators, ocean mining being out there, one of them talking about minor payouts. Do you think you'll be paid fairly if you contribute to the pool that wins the halving block? How are you looking at your payout structure uh, with this epic sat, with this halving block ahead of us? It, it really depends on the pool. Um, you know, Foundry, which is one of the largest pools in the world, it's where most of the North American and the publicly traded miners are who will contribute their hash rate. Uh, they put out an announcement two days ago saying that they're aware of this epic sat, and if they find the block, they're gonna auction it off and, and donate 100% of their proceeds to the miners on a pro rate basis. So, you know, Foundry has been mining, I mean, well, they mined the last three blocks here, um, and they have, you know, a very, very good probability of hitting that. So whoever's mining on Foundry is probably gonna get a boost uh, from whatever happens on this epic sat. Mm. Well, Ben, appreciate that. How do people watch? How do they follow along? Is there something that you're looking at as this action takes place? How long will it be before you're confident that we've seen the blockchain finalize its state? Well, you know, every block that we process makes it a little bit more secure. Um, I'm personally, I've got mempool.space open right now, and I'm, I'm watching it live. I'm sure a lot of people are doing it at home. Um, Certainly, you know, one confirmation here is not going to be enough this time around. Uh, people are going to want to watch for a few blocks uh, because even after a couple of blocks, there might still be somebody who's trying to reorg this. Um, you know, but the more blocks it goes, the harder it's going to be. So it won't take too long. But, but certainly there is a greater economic incentive to try now than ever before. Well, of course, we'll be staying on, on the Bitcoin Magazine having a live stream post-show to go over these blocks to see if anything takes place. Ben, want to give your, you a chance to talk to the people out there. Oh, we're out of time. Ben, thank you for joining us. Good luck thank you. with the having block. So what is money and how does it get value? Paper money has value because someone says so. Bitcoin is different. It's like digital gold. It has value for many of the reasons gold does, but that's only the start. It has a limited supply, only 21 million, so no one can decide to just print more. Because no central authority controls it, it can never be shut down. And unlike with banks and credit card companies, you don't need approval to use it. It puts the power back in all our hands. Bitcoin lets you control your finances. Kraken lets you buy Bitcoin. Kraken, see what crypto can be.